Good afternoon and welcome to the COVID-19 update on Channels Television. I'm Millicent Walker. First, some of the highlights. Today, the nation eagerly awaits resumption of flights as the aviation sector prepares for reopening June 21. Emo State joins stage with COVID-19 deaths as it records its first. And United States coronavirus cases passes the 2 million mark. Nigeria is among the top five African countries with the highest number of confirmed COVID-19 cases on the continent. And that's after South Africa and Egypt in first and second place. Nigeria ranked number three with the latest figures from the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, NCDC, put at 13,873. 4,351 patients have been discharged across the country and 382 deaths recorded. Following the confirmation of 409 infections yesterday, the cases were recorded in Lagos, which registered 201 cases, the FCT 85, Delta 22, Edo 16, Nasarawa Bono and Kaduna have 14 each, Boti 10, Rivers 9, 5 each in Enugu and Kano, 4 each in Ogun and Ondo states, while Bayelsa, Kebi, Plateau had two cases each. Regionally, Lagos retains the highest number in the southwest with 6,266 cases. The FCT in the north central has one, once again displaced Kano uh, to emerge second highest with 1,097 cases, while Kano leads in the northwest with 1,025 cases. Ado's leading in the south-south with 478 cases, Borno still tops in the northeast with 385 cases, and Eboye maintains top in the uh, southeast with 152 cases. Now let's take a look at the Channel Television COVID-19 case monitoring dashboard. It's a... Um, dashboard that a portal that gives you daily updates on the coronavirus cases in Nigeria. It shows activities in each state and it breaks down uh, the cases by local government. Uh, Yomi Otegbe, our health correspondent, speaks to the daily figures. Yomi, we've been seeing an increase um, in the number of days since our first index case. It's not good news that you have for us today, is it? Well, it's not really good news, but you know, Every time you look at the bright side, so if I should just start from the recovered cases, we have over 4,000, so that's good news. But what is um, showing here now is we have confirmed case that is over 13,000. So we started, okay, if we look back at May 4th, for instance, and between May 4th and June the 4th, we've had over 8,000 cases. May 4th, we had just over 2,000 cases, and by June, Fourth, we have over 11,000 cases, and now we are at 13. So that means, you know, the community transmission stage is very active. Indeed. And we're also seeing a lot of these cases. Most people still feel as much as we do more testing and, and more surveillance, more contact yeah. tracing. We will see a lot more cases because Nigeria is ranking third in Africa. But this is after you have figures like over a little over 39 in Egypt mm -hmm. and then a little over 50 so, in South Africa. So if you look at Nigeria's cases, you find here, you know, the hotspots. You have... Um, Abuja, okay, so Lagos is leading actually, right. and Abuja is taking over from Kano, as you mentioned earlier. So we have the FCT, we have Kano, we have Edo and Ogun State. So those are the hotspots right now in Nigeria. But let's take it, you know, to the local government area, talking about Kano now. You know, Kano, um, you know, when the case started in April and then it was exponential. And, you know, all of a sudden we see that the case is coming like five, like four, you know, reported each day. So we have Kano. The total confirmed case for Kano now is 1,025. But if we look at the local government breakdown of Kano, let, let's see now. So this, if you, if you look at here, you may be a bit confused, but this is the figures that, you know, the latest of the local government breakdown from Kano that we have as of now. So, but the areas that you need to look at in Kano is Taruni, uh, Nasarawa, Gwale, Combosto, and Dala. Those are the hotspots there. And so people in that area want to also take 
safety precautionary measures, you know, very, very seriously. It's also interesting what we're seeing in Kano. This has also been witnessed in perhaps several other states, and this is perhaps in the last two days, because we had, you know, our single highest infections, uh, over 600, over 600 uh, yesterday, yes. and then just last night, um, uh, 409. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to get more cases, aren't we? Yeah, if we do more testing, we'll get more cases, and we're doing more testing now. So if we um, look at the testing, you see that on the... When we look at May 4th, you see we had just about, um, just about how many tests done then. You know, it's not the figures that we have now. We have the total samples tested as of May 4th was 19,000. As of May, June 4th, we have 73,000. So the testing has gone up. But some people say, okay, so we are seeing these cases because the testing is going up. But for me, I think it's also speaks volume about, you know, how active the community transmission is. So if you look for something, if it's not there, you won't find it. So we are finding more cases because we have them in our midst. If we could just go back to what we can see across the country, thank you. Uh, the confirmed cases, the uh, active case, and that is if we, of course, go back to what we are seeing in mm -hmm. some of the states. Totally, we understand that we've got conducted uh, samples tested are 85,375. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. The NCDC has said we could see numbers as high as over 1,000 in a single day infection, but uh, I guess it's more figures, more data we'll be bringing mm -hmm. uh, to our viewers. You know, the, the NCDC also mentioned that, yes, we have ramped up testing, but not a lot of people are bringing themselves forward to get tested. So if you have some of these symptoms or you know somebody who has exhibited, uh, you know, fever and, you know, breathlessness and all of that, you can go into, you know, any of the local government areas, particularly the health facilities, and, you know, get advice as to how to move on from there. Yes, while we stay with the non-pharmaceutical um, measures, and that mm -hmm. is prevention. Thank Face you so much, Yomi. Yeah. The COVID-19 case monitoring dashboard with the latest there. But let's, uh, of course, tell you what's happening in the aviation sector. Domestic flights are expected to resume June 21, three months after Nigeria initially closed airports across the country. It appears the airport authority is reshaping the domestic terminals to accommodate social distancing among passengers while protecting all the stakeholders. Our aviation correspondent, Bukola Joe Ketumbi, has more. Aircraft parked at the airside of the General Aviation Terminal in Lagos owing to the coronavirus pandemic that has grounded airline fleets around the world. By the 21st of June, these Nigerian registered planes will probably take back to the skies with willing passengers. Those airplanes have been kept. When we are going to bring them back into service, we will ensure that they are airworthy uh, and that they can make those flights and safely. When flights resume, passengers, however, will be welcomed with the two-meter distancing markers outside the terminal, a glass barrier that protects both customer service agents and passengers, and the wearing of face masks will be compulsory. Passengers will also be required to obey the distancing in seating arrangement while they wait in the departure lounge. Away from the preparations for local flights in Nigeria, the International Air Transport Association says the global airline industry is expected to lose a whopping $84 billion in 2020, making it the worst in aviation history. It is, uh, uh, it's a disaster uh, for, the, for the industry, but you know, we are not authorized to fly or to cross borders or to bring international passengers. So that our... Uh, our uh, uh, Raison d'être, the reason why we are working, has disappeared for weeks, for months. So it explains why we are in such a difficult and tragic situation. The global airline body believes that now the countries are opening up for flights, all the conditions put in place for safe travels be strictly implemented. Bukola Ju Ukitumbi, Channels Television News.
Now, one person has died as a result of complications from COVID-19 in Emo State, the first COVID-19 death recorded in the state, addressing newsmen in Oura, the Emo State capital. The chairman of the COVID-19 task force, Professor Morris Iwu, disclosed that the person had underlining health issues before he was brought in, which might have complicated his chances of surviving the coronavirus. Well, joining us in the studio here in Lagos is Dr. Fulashare Fadare, Head of Pediatrics Department, General Hospital at Kodo Ijebu, or rather Ibejuleki. She joins us on the program in Lagos. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Thank you for having me. All right. First, um, I'd like to ask, are you comfortable with the pace that we're easing and relaxing our lockdown? Well, I cannot say I am comfortable because um, the pandemic is not over yet. We are still having active cases and so easing the lockdown though we we are tired staying away we want to have our life back but it is not the pandemic is not over so we still need to be careful even as we ease the lockdown i understand you coordinate contact tracing uh, a salt pillar for the lagos response um what have you been observing how's that been going well, the um, finding had been that we now have increased um, family, household contact, um, having COVID, there is high community transmission. When we started the pandemic, it was more of um, people, passengers of interest or people of interest, as we call them, people that traveled in. But now we now have um, probably people that had had contact with them because of our high mobility. Even with the lockdown, people are, were still moving. So we're now having their um, junior workers taking it to their homes and people still going to one um, gathering or the other. So we now have a high community transmission. As I speak with you, we have cases all over Lagos State. So when people say they want to know where they should go to or where they should not go to, I will tell you everywhere in Lagos is saturated. I'm a little worried now about where I stay now. You say everywhere is saturated. That is the fact. When we started the, 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 um, the response, we had it more around Etiosa, Ikoyi, and Alimosho. But as I speak with you, we have in Ekwe, we have in Ibejuleki, we have cases in Surulere, we have in Mushin, we have in Ojo, we have Amu Wadofin, then Ikorodu. So we have the suburb of Lagos State, Akute, eh, Magboro, even the Redemption Camp. We have cases that we are following up. And we have even people that have traveled in. I, I, I follow the contact tracing. And so we have cases that have traveled from Abia State. We have cases that have traveled from um, Kano State. And so we are interfacing. Even Uyo, we have people. I have cases that have traveled from Uyo. I have people that have traveled from uh, FCT. And this is happening against the interstate and they, uh, yes. travel ban. Yes, and they are now in Lagos. And so we have high community transmission. Tell us how um, you handle cases, children who perhaps you've contact traced and you know, have contracted the virus. Well, coincidentally, we don't have more children affected. And I wonder, probably it's because they are still indoor. If you look at the cases that we have um, tested or the cases that have been tested and are becoming positive, we don't have much children. And even when we have families, the husband is positive, the wife is positive, we find out that the children still remain negative. So do you think schools should reopen for children? So for me, I, I will say for now, let us still wait until the pandemic is controlled, at least when we don't have active transmission. But if we hope now, and, you know, children opening means every, everything opening up. Um, mother going to work, leaving children at school, university opening, and everywhere. So it's like having our life back. 
And, you know, there are some level of children you cannot even control. Don't stay there. Or wait there. You know? Mm -hmm. Even when we have uh, cases that are positive and we say, oh, you are self-isolating at home. How are you doing with the children? Some of them, we said, even when I sleep off and I wake up, I will just see my child that I said, don't come near me. Oh, I'm self-isolating. So the, we, we still need to please wait for the school. It is when they are alive that they can go back to school. All right. We'd like to appreciate you. Thank you for coming. Wish you Thank all you the best. Uh, please stay safe. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Fulashari Fadari, Head of Pediatrics yeah. Department, General Hospital, Ibejuleki. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. We have more on the COVID-19 updates when we return. The Ogun State government has asked residents to remain calm in the wake of the spike in positive cases of coronavirus following the record of 108 cases in one day, the highest since the index case was recorded on the 27th of February 2020. The State Commissioner for Health, Dr. Tomi Koke, uh, said in Abeokuta that the spike was a consequence of increased population sampling and increased testing capacity to about 600 daily, saying there was no cause for alarm as majority of the positive cases were asymptomatic. She emphasized the need for people to focus on the outcome of the cases which had been favorable for the state, adding that more patients were being discharged, while only 13 fatalities have been recorded, which was about 3% of the total confirmed cases so far. The commissioner called on residents to continue to act responsibly by observing all the necessary precautions, such as physical distancing, the use of the face mask and uh, personal hygiene. Now, pharmacist Ibrahim Babashehu Ahmed, a director of planning, research and statistics, the Pharmacist Council of Nigeria, joins us on the program from Abuja. Uh, glad you could join us. Thank you. Um, what, in your view, is Africa's response to finding a vaccine or perhaps a, a treatment regimen to COVID-19? Thank you and good afternoon. Um, the response, I can say, is good because we have been challenged. And uh, although right here in, uh, in within the African uh, continent, we may not really be working hard on getting vaccine, but I do know that we are working on several remedies that will help control the current pandemic. You most have heard of efforts that we are looking, uh, that have been uh, uh, that, are, that are being worked on uh, using uh, local content. I mean, looking inward, because that is our approach now. I think what we have left all along is the fact that we, we look at um, uh, molecules coming, I mean, chemical uh, molecule, molecular entities, uh, which uh, largely are, are, are products of a high uh, capacity research coming from advanced countries as a um, um, medicines that or as a uh, substances that we relied on. But I think in Africa, what we have done is to, is to go back, come back to the basis and see what we have missed all over the years. And uh, I think with that background, what we are, our approach has been to look inward and see what remedies can we produce from here, which of course essentially or largely will come from our traditional medicine, from our herbs, and of course, medicinal plants. You, would have, you must have heard about the Madagascar effort. Um, Nigeria has also come up with several, at least three have been uh, processed now by NAVDAC. Uh, you're also aware of NIP, what NIPRID has been doing. So I think this is where we are as far as the African continent. We are looking inward into most of uh, the materials that we have or that we can easily source here, which of course uh, have a lot of benefit, but which has been overlooked for a very long period of time. Still talking about Africa, we hear that Ghana has some promising news with, um, you know, developing a sort of COVID-19 antibody test um, by the end of July, still waiting for further approval. And we understand that, you know, it is working with other countries, Nigeria inclusive, Cameroon, uh, with backing from the World Health Organization on a mobile app that would trace um, people potentially high risk of getting the virus. Um, what do you make of, you know, some of these measures we're seeing? Because if you look at Ghana's figures, it's uh, death toll 
is quite low, below 50, even though it has um, over 9,000 confirmed cases. Yeah, I, I, it's, it's a good effort uh, coming uh, all the way from Ghana. And uh, what we need here now is about collaboration. Whereas Ghana is uh, working in that direction of trying to produce a, a app for testing, other countries are also working on other components, I mean, in terms of remedies. So we, we are working collectively, and what Ghana is doing is something that is, is being encouraged, is something that we, we are happy about, is something that we support, is something we are collaborating with. But that does not also uh, take away the fact that what we are also doing here is not of interest to other African countries. Ghana inclusive. I do know that everybody is working from different uh, direction. And uh, together, I think we'll get to the promised land as far as this matter is concerned. Hopefully, and perhaps indeed. This is one opportunity that is challenging us. This is one opportunity that has challenged us to now say that, okay, we do have the capacity. All that we need now is to reinvigorate those things that we have not been doing before and perhaps rise to where we are supposed to be. Indeed, and coming from Nigeria, we've been told the federal government is conferring with traditional and herbal practitioners. We hear three claims have been shortlisted to go into further validation. We appreciate your time. Uh, Pharmacist Ibrahim Ahmed, thank you for joining us on the program. Thank you very much. Now, there are now more than 7.3 million infections globally and more than 416,000 deaths. Of that figure, the U.S. accounts for a little over 2 million confirmed cases. Although the daily number of new cases has declined sharply in some parts of the U.S., including New York, the figure is increasing in 20 states. Russia has also passed 500,000 coronavirus cases. According to the Johns Hopkins University, the U.S., now has over 2 million cases. Daily infections are still rising in some states as governments ease restrictions. The death toll stands at 112,924 and 533,504 people have recovered. Meanwhile, New Yorkers are gradually returning to mass transit as the city reopens. They uh, kicked out the bombs. They finally cleaned this up. Uh, subway uh, stations, a little bit cleaner. So, you know, this pandemic and everything, with everything going on, they, uh, they uh, stepped up. I'm curious to see how it's going to pan out when everybody gets back and it's back to the normal New York. Turkish Airlines and its budget carrier, Anadolu Jet have resumed some of their international flights to Germany, Britain and the Netherlands, only carrying passengers with approved documents. The outbound flights can only carry passengers with EU citizenship, residence permit or certain visas. The COVID-19 disease has killed more than 4,700 and infected more than 170,000 in Turkey, although President Tayyip Erdogan's government says the outbreak is under control. New Zealand has gone 20 days with no new virus cases, even after the country lifted almost all of its restrictions. The country is at level one, which allows all schools and workplaces to open. Weddings, funerals and public transport can resume without any restrictions, and social distancing is no longer required, but is encouraged. The Nigeria Center for Disease Control NCDC website has all the information, statistics on the cases across states. It also has regular updates on the COVID-19 regulations and guidelines. Every new case, they say, is motivation to keep pushing and each recovery is proof that we can get through this together. Take responsibility. It's the message from the NCDC to protecting your health. From the World Health Organization, you'll find uh, the updates uh, on the dashboard. Also, it has strategies and plans each moment it keeps updating the number of cases, the number of deaths and the recovery efforts across board. You can take a closer look at some of the numbers in real time. Our website, channelcv.com, has the latest news. All you need to do is log on, access news in health, politics, business, sports, Africa and around the world. That is channelstv.com. That's our COVID-19 update at this time. Thank you for watching. I'm Millicent Walker. Bye for now.